Good afternoon to our viewers. I'm Fee Renada, Raptor reporter, and here we're at Raptor Talk where we have invited uh, the dismissed palace undersecretary, attorney Halman Valdez, to speak to us about the issue of rice importation and the allegations thrown against her by NFA Administrator Jason Aquino and also some claims made by President Rodrigo Duterte himself about um, her involvement in this issue of rice importation. So good afternoon, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon, Pia. Okay, so and to I'm, our viewers. Yes, uh, I'm sure you've had a very busy day uh, talking about this issue. Uh, and we'd just like to bring up again uh, the issue, most, most especially because the president just raised it again in a press conference he gave um, at the Davo International Airport uh, before leaving for Saudi Arabia. He discussed again, he was asked again about the issue. So um, I just want to quote from the interview from the press conference and the president was just saying that um, it seems he, he is claiming that you were the one who signed who approved the importation permits which um, NFA administrator Jason Aquino uh, wanted to overrule or wanted to deny yeah. so uh, can you just clear up this issue was it you really who bypassed the office of the president and went ahead to sign these importation permits yeah, um, it seems to me that the president has not yet been given the opportunity to talk to the NFA Council, the policy-making body of the NFA. So with respect to your question, I don't have a signing authority over the import permits. Uh, what, what happened was that the NFA Council approved the extension of the permits. And uh, I can show it here to you, Pia. Mm -hmm. It has been signed by the nine members out of ten. So, for example, in this case, uh, I signed on behalf of the cabinet secretary as his alternate, but it was also signed by the cabinet secretary. So, what I signed was only as an uh, what I signed was the resolution, which was again countersigned by the by the cabinet secretary, giving. Uh, or the, uh, authorizing the extension of the said permits. But with respect to the import permits, it's only the administrator of the NFA who has the sole unbridled authority to sign the import permits. In this particular case, however, the council decided to give authority to sign to the cabinet secretary because uh, the, the council members were already anticipating that there might be uh, administrative problems given the behavior of the administrator. However, for the record, the cabinet secretary has not signed a single import permit. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, ma'am, that the, this, this information that reached the president isn't exactly accurate? Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, the president is the president made aware of uh, these developments? Has there been any effort from the office of the cabinet secretary to point out um, the accuracy concerns of these, this information? Uh, yes, from our end, we, we tried our best to exercise due diligence. So how did we do that? We, we prepared memorandum for the president, we, we prepared copies of the resolution, explanation, etc. And we forwarded it using the formal channels and protocol uh, as provided inside the Malacanya. Okay, so ma'am, just to reiterate, you're, you're trying to say that um, you never bypassed any authority that um, at the end of the day the papers the permits are still with the OP and it will still be up to the president to decide and you're still waiting for the what is the status now of the permits extension? The, the, some of the permits not all of it particularly the permits of the small farmers cooperatives were, were asked to be surrendered to the office of the cabinet secretary for it to be discussed again in the next council meeting so I, I'd also like to clarify that one of the members of the NFA Council is the office of the president. Mm -hmm. So they have a representative uh, in the NFA Council. And I, I, I think the, the term bypassed is misplaced because the policy-making body of the NFA is again the NFA Council. So it was just making use of the institutional mechanisms that are already in place, which is when you when you decide on whether or not to import, on whether or not to extend, you do it within the confines of the Council. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the one of the issues that you were floating against the administrator is how he would unilaterally make decisions that uh, run counter to decisions already reached by the, the NFA Council. Yes. So before, before the NFA Council uh, reached the decision of extending 
the permits coming from all territories. We have already been receiving reports that the NFA administrator has been very selective when it comes to uh, extending import permits. So, so it, it really caused a stir among the NFA council members. Now, how come he's being selective? What's so special about this, uh, this country or this importer? So, and then it, it has, and then we found out that he, he extended permits coming from India and Pakistan when the NFA Council authorized the extension, again, coming from all territories. And then later on, we found out that uh, he also extended some permits coming from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So what is so special about these importers? Diba? So we, we have this equal protection clause. Uh, it's, it's a constitutional right. So bakit ganun? These are questions that really caused a stir and uh, pushed the council to decide that they should just give blanket extension in order to avoid yung um, pabor pabor or giving undue advantage to to selected um, importers. That's an inconsistency <coughs> which uh, we have to also shine the light on because what. Um, NFA Administrator Jason Aquino has been saying for all this time is that extension equals corruption. Yeah. But as you're saying, he actually extended for certain parties. Yes. And so uh, the question is now, why? If why? he's saying extension is corruption, then why does he go ahead and extend for certain, um, for certain parties? So was there any reason given? Any information on why he chose these countries? None. None. No, even uh, in the yeah, council? We did, we did not receive any explanation coming from the NFA administrator. Mm -hmm. And uh, why is it, ma'am, that you are pushing for the extension of all these small-time <coughs> rice importers? Why, why, are you making, why, why is it such an urgent issue that um, the permits, the extension be given right now? Yeah, so um, what, what we're having now is the uh, minimum access volume or the private sector-led importation. It's our commitment uh, to the World Trade Organization. So this program happens every year, and this is our uh, this is our commitment to the WTO as part of the bargaining with the with the quantitative restriction on rice. Mm -hmm. uh, with with yeah, so it has already been programmed as early as August of last year that it's meant to come in uh, around this period. So this volume from the MAV has already been predetermined, uh, computed na siya. Hence, based sa study ng NFA Council, it will no longer affect if we're going to have bumper harvest because the MAV or the private sector-led importation will be will be going will be will will go to the, uh, to the industry stocks as opposed to that of NFA, which will go to the buffer stock. Mm. So to be, to, be, to be clear also, a lot of these private sector-led uh, imports have already arrived as early as mm. January and February. And they've been trying their very best to get hold of the administrator to have their permits extended, but to no avail. Uh, based on our small investigation, uh, we saw on his Facebook that he's been everywhere except his office. At the same time, he's been out of the, co the country twice. So in, in, with, in less than two months. Mm -hmm. So these importers are, are very disturbed that they have to pay demoraje every, every day. Because the, again, these, these imports have already been prepaid also with the land bank. Mm -hmm. So what, what's... What's so strange right now is that, number one, they become uh, smugglers by default mm -hmm. because their, their permits have already expired. expired. Mm -hmm. They are already at, uh, in, uh, at our ports, and then they could not file uh, their entry. So if they could not file their entry, that means that the money that they have paid to the government could not be actually credited as um, income for the government. Yeah. And worse, there's this, uh, there's this possibility that their imports or their rice will be seized by the Bureau of Customs. Kasi smuggled. Or the supplier of the rice will demand that 
it be returned back to, uh, to the country of origin, which has already happened to some. What is the implication aside from on the suppliers to the food security situation in the Philippines of these pending permits not being extended? Yeah, we have to take into consideration that when it comes to stocking, buffer stocking, we have three baskets. The first is the industry stock. The second is the buffer stock of the government, and third is the household stocks. So the minimum access volume or the, or the private sector-led importation will go to the industry stocks. And then sometimes the NFA may uh, fill in their buffer stock either by buying from our local farmers or by importing. Mm -hmm. And then we have the household stocks. These are the small-time farmers in the rural areas who would just plant rice in order for their own consumo or consumption. So what the council wants is for NFA to buy aggressively from our local farmers, mm -hmm. given that we have a buffer, uh, given that we have a bumper harvest. So for bumper this, bumper harvest meaning we have we ha a lot. We, of yeah, we harvest. have a lot. So for this year, the NFA has been given five billion pesos to procure local palay, mm. and based on Neda's observation, it appears that the uh, the NFA has been lagging behind its targets, its uh, palay procurement target. So that is a very huge question that's bothering the NFA Council. How come you're not buying aggressively that you have 5 billion? Mm -hmm. And then you're advocating for government-to-government -government importation with 1 million metric tons and that is worth 24 billion of loan. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you loan and you buy 1 million metric tons from abroad, you will be supporting the foreign farmers as opposed to just you using the money given to you by the GAA and then you you buy the local palay. Mm -hmm. uh, NFA Administrator Jason Aquino keeps saying that he prefers government to government transaction because it's faster, it's uh, cleaner money supposedly because it's a simpler process. And he's accusing the system of uh, importing using private lead through the private sector under the MAV to be um, prone to corruption and abuses because of the uh, existence of a, of a cartel within the, the industry. Uh, how would you defend, um, how would you respond to these claims? Yeah. So, um, to put things into context, the government-to-government -government importation and the minimum access volume are actually complementary. But based on observation of our, uh, uh, of our legislators, uh, previously the MAV was prone to, to some form of corruption. So that's why our senators came up with a new law, the Agricultural Smuggling as Economic Sabotage Law. So it's a very aggressive law, and it, it, has, made, uh, it has made smuggling through private sector-led importation almost impossible already. But when it comes to the government-to-government -government importation, Pia, um, it is exempted from the procurement law. So when, it's ex when something is exempted from the procurement law, it, it, it's more like kanya-kanyang discarte on how to go about it. So it lacks filters, it is full of loopholes. At the same time, you, uh, you get unbridled discretion on how to go about the whole process. For the G2G, what we have observed is that the NFA will invite the suppliers, the NFA will bid out the quota, and then after that, uh, they will negotiate they will negotiate with, uh, with the suppliers to take in or to consider their preferred cargo handlers. So, syempre, if you are the supplier and you want to get a quota, what do you do? You will yield to the request that, hey, okay, just use this supplier, just use this cargo handler instead. So what happens now if the NFA has control over the quota and over the cargo handler? that becomes prone to government sanction smuggling. Mm -hmm. So what do I mean by that? Uh, first, uh, you get rebates from the cargo handler. Mm -hmm. If you pick, if you pick um, vessel A without any procurement, you can easily tell uh, vessel A to give you rebates. Mm -hmm. At the same time, if, if what has been permitted by the council, for example, is only 100,000 metric tons worth of G2G, there's no stopping NFA if they will actually load 150,000 G2G. Mm. Overloading. Yeah, overloading. So who will check that? 
they're the ones doing the procurement, they're the ones issuing the permits, they're the ones uh, coordinating with the Bureau of Customs, they're the ones checking it out. So there, there's no filter. So the, NF, the NFA Council, although it's not against the G2G, it has already recognized the fact that it needs to review the guidelines on the G2G to make it more transparent. Mm -hmm. Are you saying, ma'am, that Jason Aquino might be in cahoots with other governments or maybe um, companies from abroad so that they can make money out of government-to-government -government transactions? Yeah, what, what we have observed is that even before the NFA Council has agreed on a government-to-government -government importation, until now, it has not yet agreed uh, for NFA to undertake government-to-government -government impor importation. The NFA uh, administrator has already written notices to, to, the, to, Jap to the Thai government and to Vietnam government and telling them to wait for further announcements for the G2G as if it's already a done deal. So I think that he's, it, it's some form of negotiation which is no longer part of his mandate. Who should negotiate anyway? Not even the NFA Council. It should be the DF DFA. So if there are requests such as government to government, what the NFA Council does is coordinate it with the ASPAC of the DFA. Mm -hmm. And then it, it passes through that process. But in his case, he goes to... Mm -hmm. So where, does, uh, where do um, Finance Secretary Sonny Dominguez and the NEDA Director General Ernie Pernia stand on this issue knowing that they are also trusted advisors of the President and they have his ear on this issue. Yeah, I, can, I cannot speak on behalf of the Department of Finance Secretary and, and for the NEDA, but they have signed the, the resolution. I mean, their agency signed the resolution. So I'd like to think that based on their expertise, this is the sound decision. This is a sound decision. This is a sound policy. And uh, did they also try to speak with the President to clear the issue up? Um, I think there have been efforts, but since the ASEAN is um, ongoing, the, the schedule of the, of the President is really tight. So uh, from what I heard, uh, they're really hoping to meet the president, the whole council, hopefully by next week. Mm, next week, but yeah. then he's going to be in Middle East, so maybe yeah. in Middle East. I think yeah. some of them are with him there. I'm not sure. Mm. Next, along ko next week. Ah, okay. He's coming back next week, right? Yes. He left uh, today. Maybe later next mm -hmm. week. Okay, so um, Aquino also has been making accusations, personal accusations against you, your character. Um, and basically zeroing in on Jojo Suleiman, who we know is a long-time rice trader um, involved with other issues before. Um, and he's been saying that uh, he's a member of the rice cartel and that uh, your mother, a former NFA employee, had an affair with uh, an NFA assistant administrator who was also connected to the same cartel as Jojo Suleiman. Um, what is the... Can you clear up this issue? What exactly is yeah, he saying? Yeah, for the record, I never met Mr. Jojo Suleiman. My mom used to work for NFA. She, she, she was a rank and file employee. She retired around 10 years ago. And the cast of characters that he's been talking about came in four years after my mom retired. Mm -hmm. And he even wrote in his poison letter to the president that he signed. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, write, you, if you write a poison letter, you don't sign it. So I. I crazy. So anyway, he, he said in his statement that my, my mom has been living with another man who's not uh, her husband, etc. For the record, my mom and dad are in good loving relationship. My mom suffered a stroke three years ago. She's now our patient. We're taking good care of her and you can even ask our neighbors na my mom and dad are living together in our family home in Quezon City. So I think this is really absurd. And a desperate, a, a very desperate move to get me out of the of the whole picture or to get rid of me, mm. and they succeeded. And he also mentioned uh, that you accepted supposedly a bribe of 2.5 million yeah. from rice cartels, mm -hmm. so that you could push for the extension of the deadline. Is this true? Of course not. When when I heard that news, or when when the cabinet secretary gave me a copy of this document, what I did was I immediately checked all my bank accounts. If 
two, if <laughs> there's 2.5 million. And then when I checked it, well, it's still uh, on its maintaining balance. And why would why would the cartel give uh, give me money? Na ang trabaho ko lang naman is to calendar to calendar uh, the activity or the council resolution, uh, the NFA council meeting, wherein it's easier for the cartels to just go straight to the sole signing authority, who is the administrator, and do business with him. Why, why does he have to, go, to pass through me? And he was saying that, uh, you know, if we extend, it will be the cartels who will benefit. Mm -hmm. But actually not. The cartels, I think, are, I'm not even sure if we should use the word cartel because it's very judgmental. Mm -hmm. But these are old timers, old time traders mm -hmm. uh, who perhaps have managed to memorize the system. So lahat yan above board. Given that, for sure, they were the first ones to have their, their uh, importations uh, come in because they have already mastered the system. So who were, who were those lagging behind? Those lagging behind were the small farmers cooperatives. The new ones given yes. permits this administration. Yes, yes. because the, the directive of the cabinet secretary is to spread the sunshine. You know, um, why don't we look for legitimate farmer cooperatives and, uh, and give them the opportunity to participate in this private sector-led importation? Mm -hmm. So we coordinated with the Cooperative Development Authority to have them checked one by one. So apparently, um, they were the ones lagging behind because of the small volume. It takes a long time for the vessel to be filled. So medyo late ang dating. So, some of them, uh, some of the uh, shipments from the small farmers co-op came January, came Feb, and until now, they still have no permits. Mm -hmm. So they're still paying the demoraje, etc. So you're saying, ma'am, that uh, these old-time importers might be working, or you're saying it's possible that they might be <coughs> working for, uh, working with Administrator Aquino to quote-unquote sabotage the eligibility of these new-time importers to engage in private-led importation? Yeah, uh, it's very difficult to speculate. But Pia, um, if, if the new traders uh, or even, even some of the traders, the old-timer traders, uh, won't be able to deliver on time, in the next MAV, they will be blacklisted. So they can no longer participate in the next MAV. So if these traders can no longer participate in the next MAV, you have a new uh, pool of quota which will be vacated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's new opportunity yeah, for new opportunity. other importers, yeah. or maybe the same ones to get bigger quotas. Is yeah. that right? Mm. Okay. Uh, just going back to what the president has said on this issue, because uh, what he accuses you of, aside from signing uh, documents, is siding against the farmers um, because you want rice importation to happen and rice importation will disadvantage local farmers who can't compete with the cheap rice from abroad um are you why why uh is this issue really about rice importation because we know that jason aquino is also for rice importation yes uh why is rice importation even necessary given this uh this sentiment that it could disadvantage local farmers why do we still have to import rice well, we still have to import rice because we could not produce enough to meet our consumption requirement. But uh, as of last year, when, when the cabinet secretary became the chairman of the NFA Council, he was very prudent in terms of advocating for importation. So previously, from the past few years, our, our importation rate is at 5 to 7% of our consumption rate. But as of last year, we were only at 2.75%. And it's because the cabinet secretary has been very prudent in terms of importation. So it should not be about MA versus G2G, but it, uh, it's all about timing. The, the issue on rice is really all about timing and the soundness of it all, the economics of it all. And the best thing really to support and to protect our farmers is to buy their produce. Mm -hmm. Again, we have 5 billion pesos earmarked for that. The NFA management should make use of that, spend all of that to protect our farmers. 
they've been saying that we have a bump uh, we've been saying that uh, we have a bumper harvest it means that we are produce we have produced a lot for this period so anong ibig sabihin noon if you have so much supply the tendency is our farmers might be baka baraten ng ibang traders because the supply is really high so that's where the NFA should come in for uh, NFA should buy the the palay of our local farmers in order to make sure that they will have enough profit margin. Mm -hmm. So that's 17 pesos because it's running around 17 to 19 pesos right now. And what the council has been advocating for through Cabinet Secretary Evasco is to increase the farm gate price. Mm -hmm. If 17 pesos is too low, then why don't we increase it? We make it 18, we make it 19. Mm -hmm. It's only a presidential directive. And, and the NFA should really push for that NFA management because the NFA Council is pushing for that. So, yun, yun ang mga paraan para maprotektahan ang ating mga local farmers. Uh, can, if um, Aquino pushes through with the government-to-government -government transaction, can he still buy from local farmers? He can, of course. But this should be this should be handled or this should be discussed within the confines of the NFA Council. But bef even before it passes through the NFA Council, it still has to pass through the National Food Security Committee. So the National Food Security Committee determines if there is a need to import and by how much. So if the National Food Security Committee will say that we need to import around 100,000 pesos, uh, 100,000 metric tons, that resolution will be submitted to the NFA Council. The NFA Council will then decide, um, should we grant the whole 100,000 or should we just allow 50,000? And then after that, the NFA Council will decide what mode. Should it be via government to government or should it be via private sector led? So these are all uh, within the institutional mechanisms of the NFA Council because it has been designed to be to be a vessel for participatory governance because no one has mon monopoly of wisdom over food security. Mm -hmm. So what's happening now? Diba? Um, we have an administrator who has his own palo, who has his own agenda, and who's been very defiant of the council. Aquino has been saying naman that we need to import, we need to do government to government transaction because there is a shortage in the buffer stock. Uh, is there a shortage? To determine if there is a shortage or not, uh, it should be discussed in the National Food Security Committee and with the NFAC, not with him. He, he cannot unilaterally say that there is a shortage. Based on our observation, Pia, the NFA management has been using the obsolete formula uh, for the consumption per capita rate. So that determines if we have enough buffer stock, industry stock, or commercial uh, or household stocks. So they've been saying in their report that it, they are at eight days to last. Mm -hmm. But when Neda computed it, it's, we, we still are at 13 to 14 days to last. Mm -hmm. So the two to three days gap can easily be supplied through local importation. That's local procurement. Local procurement. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sorry. Local procurement, yeah. So, so you're, you're differing also in the basis for even importing the, on the buffer stock. Uh, but why is it for you better that the information be coming from the council, the NEDA? Uh, because he also, well, backed up his um, allegation with charts, with, uh, with computations, with, with numbers, um, based on a yeah. uh, regional NFA. Yeah, all of which are figment of his imagination. <laughs> I mean, how can, you, how can you advocate for something that uh, all are... All are within the confines of your agency, you know? It's so easy to influence your, mm -hmm. your bodeguero or your, or your regional directors, etc. Isn't it more sound to have it, to, to discuss it with an interagency committee, wherein you have the NEDA, you have the Department of Finance, you have the BSP, you have the Office of the President, etc. So, ma'am, you're saying a council is harder to influence than yes. one person. Yes. And the council decisions are backed up by hard evidence. NEDA, before it computes, it gets data from PSA, from NIA, etc. So 
So, mas marami siyang sources as opposed to that of NFA which only has one source itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, ma'am, we'll go to the president and how he gets information because this is also a very central issue in this whole affair. Uh, people are concerned, where does he get his information about issues of national import, like rice importation? Mm -hmm. uh, how, what, in, in the palace, how, how usually does offices like, for example, the Office of the Cabinet Secretary um, update the president on issues it's on top of? What's the process? Well, uh, if ever we want, we want certain issues to reach the president, we, we prepare a memorandum for the president and then it's backed up by evidence, etc. And then my, my unit uh, forwards it to the Office of the Secretary or uh, the Office of the Cabinet Secretary. And then he forwards it to the Office of the uh, Special Assistant. Bongo. So, uh, and then from, from SAP Bongo, parang it's just assumed that uh, his office will bring it to the president's attention. Yeah. Mm, okay. And so far, uh, has the system worked for for the office of the cabinet secretary? It's really hard to speculate, but, but at least uh, for for NFA, for NFA, it appears that uh, the the president has not read perhaps the memorandum for the president coming from the cabinet secretary and even that of coming from the Department of Finance. Mm, so there was uh, communication from DOF. Yeah, yeah. And what was the memorandum Yeah, about? The, the memorandum for the president uh, prepared by the Department of Finance uh, supported, the, supported the resolution. Mm, okay. yeah. So si since MFPs are considered as highly confidential documents, it's only for the eyes of the president. So uh, I I saw the heading mm -hmm. and the, you know, yung mm -hmm. baba, the recommendation, but not the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we also know that the president is a consultative president. We've seen him meet with a lot of committees, like the Climate Change Commission, yeah. um, the LEDAC. He's very uh, adamant about putting these groups together, making sure they meet on a regular basis um, to make sure that issues uh, are, there is consultation along the way. Um, it's just surprising that uh, he would refuse or he has not yet met with the council on, such, on an issue which he seems to care a lot about. Uh, what's your take on this? How come he hasn't met the NFA council he should, yet? He should really meet the council. And the council members should also move heaven and earth mm -hmm. to be given the opportunity to talk to the president and guide him in this matter. Mm -hmm. And have there been efforts from the council to, yes. to meet with him? Yes. Yes. Um, Let's hope that uh, they get to meet the president next week. Yeah, let's next week. hope. Okay. Uh, so, ma'am, we have a, a question from social media. So, this question is from Baby Riss. Uh, and his question is, or her question is, what is Aquino's experience or exposure to have him appointed as NFA head? I have no idea. All I know is that he was incarcerated for five years, but, but later on acquitted. Mm -hmm. Um, he used to work for the Bureau of Customs, I heard. And then in his person, personal data sheet, he said that uh, he was consultant uh, at the Senate. I'm not sure kung kaninong senator. Mm -hmm. So what was the Office of the Cabinet Secretary's first impression of him when he was appointed, uh, when he started work as administrator? Yeah, the, the Cabinet Secretary uh, does not recommend or you know he doesn't meddle with the appointments mm -hmm. so the tendency is that kung whoever comes in he he welcomes that person with open arms and with no judgment no mm -hmm. prior judgment at all because we're hoping that um, these people will will open their minds and their hearts to to learn new things you know so unfortunately hindi, hindi ganun yung naging dynamics mm -mm. Uh, see Administrator Aquino, surrounding his um, appointment, would you know how he got in in the first place? Who recommended him? As I really NFA? have no idea where he came from. So you were just surprised when you were yes. told that? Yes, mm. very surprised. Mm. And how was the working relationship in the first few days? In like? the, yeah, in the first few days it was fine. Pero we, we, start, we started uh, doubting the his how do you call it, um, his intentions mm. 
when he unilaterally canceled council meetings and he made use of the cabinet secretary's name in canceling the meetings, the chairman of the NFA council is the CABSEC. So he's the one in charge of putting the agenda together, calling the meetings, etc. So one time, he canceled the meeting at 11.40 in the evening. So I had no more opportunity to talk to my principal na, Sir, did you really cancel it? Mm -hmm. So uh, the next day at 8 a.m., I really went to his office and I told him, Sir, did you really, did you really cancel it at 11.40 in the evening? Mm -hmm. He said, no, catered, andyan na yung catering, andyan na lahat, it's all prepared. Mm -hmm. So th that's when we found out that he has been named dropped by this person. Mm -hmm. uh so what is the position of CABSEC on this issue? I mean, is he still pursuing the investigation against Aquino? He said, he mentioned before that he would investigate. Yeah, actually, we're, we're, uh, before I left, uh, we, we already had you know, some, some information. Mm -hmm. And what I heard from him uh, is that he, uh, he will really do his best to meet the president. So yun, medyo short term pa yung plano ngayon and yung short term na yun means na they really have to meet the president. They really have to enlighten the president. What do you think makes Aquino so brazen in defying his own NFA council chairman? That's a, that's a very good question. It, we, we really have no idea eh, where he's getting that vigor to, to, to push for his own agenda. Mm. We have no idea where he's getting it. Why doesn't he call, why doesn't he meet with the council? What, is he make, giving any reasons why a meeting would be um, disadvantageous to the NFA? Why, he doesn't, why the meetings are unnecessary? Um, I, think, I think he wants, he wants to have an upper hand in everything. Like before, before the third council meeting that he attempted to cancel, the corporate secretary resigned. The acting corporate secretary resigned. I think because she was really pressured uh, to to cancel the meeting. But you know, the corporate secretary is an officer of the board, mm -hmm. so your loyalty should be with the board. Your loyalty should be with the board. So in that in that particular case, the council was left with no corporate secretary. The council was left to fend on their own. So what did the council do? The council uh, agreed to meet together to discuss this very important matter with no corporate secretary. Yeah, so the nine of them met that, that day. All right. Uh, just to wrap up the interview, what would be your advice to the president on what his next steps should be on this issue? I think I'm not in the position to advise him of anything, but uh, I will not beg, but I will really advocate mm. that he, he gives the council the opportunity to explain what's really going on when it comes to this very important issue, which is food security. Mm. He should really meet the council. Mm. And what is your advice to the president also in, in choosing who he listens to uh, or how he gets information? It, I think it should be clear cut that if it if it is uh, a matter of trade, for example, trade affairs, you either talk to DTI or to DOF. If it's if it has something to do with the NFA, you call for the cabinet secretary because the cabinet secretary is the chairman. Mm -hmm. If it, if it's an issue on security, perhaps you can call Bato. Mm -hmm. So somebody who is. Uh, who is knowledgeable when it comes to that matter. And it's, moral oblig it's the moral obligation of those people surrounding the president to give him the right information at the right time by the right people. Mm -hmm. So, because the president is a, is a very busy person. At the same time, it's, it's public knowledge that his love for the poor is bordering obsession. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you make use of the poor, the poor, you name drop the poor, you, you say na the poor are being oppressed, the poor are being maligned. Yung mood niya talagang gumugulo yung mundo niya. So he, he reacts violently whenever he hears that the poor people are being oppressed. Unfortunately, some people close to the president or, are give, uh, or 
who get access to the president will will make use of that mm -hmm. um, sentiment of the president, diba? So, they'll use the poor card. Yeah, to the poor card. Make him uh -huh. suddenly do something drastic. Yeah, and we, we should not uh, abuse the poor card because mm -hmm. it's a very important issue. It's, it is a policy issue. It is not a political issue. When you talk about rice, it should not. It is a political commodity, yes, mm -hmm. but rice with respect to the poor should be a policy-based approach. Mm -hmm. How did uh, Cabinet Secretary June Evasco react to your dismissal? What was his initial reaction? He was very surprised. Actually, I was the one who informed him. Eh? Because he was, he was in a meeting, I called him up, I told him, Sir, I think I, I have just been fired by no less than the president himself on live TV. And oh. then he said, Huh? I know? Oh, that's what he said. And then he, he put the phone down and then parang sabi niya, I'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, uh, after the storm, we met. Mm -hmm. And then he looked very sad. And he told me that, Halmen, remember that I'm very proud of you and I'm very happy uh, with the job that uh, you did for our government and for the country and for the president. That's it. Mm. Yeah, but I, during that period, Pia, I felt that I had to be the bigger person in the conversation because he, wa he was really surprised that his confidential employee has been kicked out without his knowledge. Do you think the president knows that you are Cabinet Sec June Evasco's kumaga, loyal guard dog, as you yeah, mentioned? I, I, ha I have no idea. Kasi mga ano kami, yung, yung group ng Office of the Cabinet Secretary, kami yung mga unknowns. Kami yung mga unknown doon. Mm -hmm. So he put somebody who is a nobody to guard the pot of gold of the poor people doon sa Executive Order Number 1. Ako yon. So it's very easy to get rid of me if I do something stupid. Diba? Kasi that's NIA, that's PCA, that's NFA. Big ticket items with huge money. Mm -hmm. So if if... I get my hands dirty. It's very easy to, you know, get rid of me. Mm. So that was his vision. Na he wa he wanted fresh blood there. He wanted somebody na walang influence, walang backer, etc. Mm. Kasi kung may backer ka or meron kang if you have friends, then it's very easy for people to go to you and can you can you help me with this contra? Can you help me with this? Can you mm. eh walang kilala. Eh. So Ganon. That was his vision. Last question, ma'am. Um, with all these things happening, uh, all the developments in this issue, do you still trust the president? I do not only trust the president, but I admire him for his love of country and love, love for the poor. Again, his love for the poor is bordering obsession. So I think it's a good thing, but, but, it is, again, the moral obligation of the bureaucrats and of the people surrounding him to give him the proper information in order to capacitate our president to come up with informed decisions. That is our burden. Kasi yung presidente natin, malino naman yung objective niya eh. Malino naman yung kanyang pananaw sa buhay eh. Na eto ang gusto kong gawin sa mga pobre. So we, we have to be very prudent um, whenever we try to, to get the poor card. You know, with the president. Burden niya ng mga bureaucrats. Burden niya ng mga tao surrounding him. Okay. Ma'am, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank for you. For giving us your insights on this issue. So, um, we've just been talking to Palace on, to dismiss Palace Undersecretary, Attorney Halman Valdez, on her side of the rice importation issue and the President, the president Duterte's claims about this issue. Thank you so much for watching Raptor Talk.